so my review of Stand By Me was cut short, and I left more information about that in the comment below it. But that kind of led to me watching Corey Feldman movie, and also another movie based on Stephen King writing. And so I give you my review of The Shining from 1980, directed by Stanley Kubrick, starring Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, I believe it is, and a kid named Danny. Now, in watching this movie, and yeah, I've, I've, you know, had to read the books in college about how this is related to this matter over here, how the story is actually about blah blah this, and all these other things. I'm going to be bringing up some of that, but I'm also going to be expressing something that I picked up on, and yeah, I hadn't seen this in quite some time, so this is my first time watching the movie post-college. And I'm going to just share with you some stuff that, you know, I found out, I figured out. And yeah, there's going to be plenty of spoilers. But if you're watching this, you've probably seen the movie already. So let's start. Jack Nicholson is on a car. He's in a car. He's going up to the mountains. This is in Colorado. He's going to this Overlook Hotel. And uh, he gets on there and he talks to uh, this guy. I guess he's the manager or something like this. They're closing down. It's end of tourist season, and they have Jack Nicholson there. He's going to be the new caretaker. He gets to move his family in. He has a strange family. Shelley Duvall's no looker, and uh, Danny has an imaginary friend named Tony. He talks and he kind of uh, gestures with the finger as well. And uh, he brings the family in there, and they talk to the cook. The cook calls Danny Doc. He's like, how do you know we call him Doc sometimes? Oh, he looks like a Doc. Well, he sits with Danny later on, eats some ice cream, and he's like, hey, you know how I knew your name was Doc, right? And he's like, yeah. You know, me and my grandma used to have this ability to call it shining. She says some people shine, and we can pick up on stuff. You need any help here? This is a weird place. You let me know. Now, if the cook has these abilities, you're telling me he's really going to be the cook of this place? Like, I mean, not to say it's a bad place, but would you, if you could detect things were haunted and shit, be the cook at a haunted hotel? And how come more things aren't happening to other people there? It seems to only matter when, like, the, the creepiness only seems to come out when there is a caretaker and most everybody else is absent. But anyways, after a month, freaky shit starts happening for the family. Uh, Dad, Jack Nicholson, is a writer. Oh, shock, Stephen King. And another movie, or rather book, about a writer. Oh, wow, you're really stepping outside your comfort zone. Jesus Christ. He's having a tough time writing whatever manuscript he's putting together. And uh, he can't concentrate. You know, later on his wife finds out he's just been describing why all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. In different paragraph stanzas, you know, it, it's looking quite intricate there. But uh, anyways, Danny's playing by himself in there. You think this is a healthy environment for a kid with this kind of creepy imagination friend? And he plays with, he has no kids around him. He's away for five months from the rest of society. Like, like, this doesn't even seem right, does it? Well, he starts seeing these girls that appear to him and, and other weird shit. I'll get into more of that in a bit. Of course, Jack Nicholson seems to go completely nuts. Starts trying to attack the wife. Shits with a baseball bat, knocks him out. Danny calls the cook. Cook, uh, or rather telepathy that reaches halfway across the nation, because I believe he's in Miami, takes a plane, talks to Duke, the trainer from Rocky, about renting a snowcat, heads up to the mountains, it's all snowed in, uh, radio and the snowcat have been taken out by crazy dad, Jack Nicholson, and uh, he's going after the, the mom and kid with the axe, Cook shows up, gets an axe in the heart, uh, Danny and, and the mom, they, they try to run off away from the, 
away from Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson goes and chases Danny out into the hedge maze. Danny tricks him, pretty shrewd move, backtracking and uh, covering up his tracks. Jack Nicholson freezes to death. Mom and, and boy get away in the new snow cat provided by Duke, the trainer from Rocky, who trained Apollo Creed. Now, the first freaky thing to happen in this movie happens a little bit under your nose. Jack Nicholson arrives at the hotel, checks in at the front desk, and they say, oh, yeah, that office, it's, uh, you know, first door on the left. So he walks over there, and you see that this is the interior of the hotel. But he goes and sits down in the office, and the office has an exterior mirror, uh, sorry, window that has sunlight going through it, along with trees. This is the first freaky shit to happen in the movie, and a lot of people aren't even gonna pick up on it. Then of course you have Danny. He's uh, playing with toy truck and, and stuff. The patterns in the floor shift, as though they had him turn around 360. Uh, is this as simple as saying, oh, it's easier than moving all the camera equipment, just to have the boy turn around? Maybe. Does it make it a little freaky and unsettling? Yeah, sure. Uh, you also have other instances here, like uh, there's a lot of straight on shots in this, and you see that in a lot of Stanley Kubrick stuff. And I think that makes it unsettling in some ways. There's some POV work. The uh, music, reminiscent of 2001 Space Odyssey. Droning sounds, in this case, pulse. You hear a lot of heartbeat. And then, oh, kind of odd orchestral, orchestral kind of uh, gimmicks. But uh, another thing that you see is there's mention, there's uh, overheard, yeah, when they built the hotel, they had to fight off the Indians, the natives, or whatever, right? And then sometimes you'll see Native American art on the wall in the main lobby. There's, uh, an Indian that appears, uh, I think it's a Calumet beans or, or green beans or something. Food in the storage where Jack Nicholson gets locked up. There's mention of a year, I think it said 1921. I think there's some significance about uh, something to do with Native Americans, maybe a, 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 a resolution or something, uh, a, a, a pretty grim year for Native Americans. And so the idea is supposed to be here that the hotel is haunted and it is getting revenge. You also hear Jack Nicholson say white man's burden at some point when he's talking to the imaginary bartender. I believe his name is Lloyd. But, uh, you know, another thing that I picked up on that I haven't really heard anybody mention, and maybe this more pertains to the book. Oh, you know, I forget that. I'm gonna get, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, there, there's also another bit of thing going on here as far as symbolism. Um, you have Danny and the first time he's seen he's brushing his teeth and he's looking in the mirror and there's a shot of him with his face out of view as he leans towards the window or sorry the mirror and you're looking through this uh, doorway. Well later on in the movie you have Jack Nicholson sitting on a bed, looking really disturbed. This is this is really where he starts to appear insane. He talks to Danny about how he'd never heard him. And it's like weird to even bring this up. Late in the movie, the mom starts to experience uh, some of the visions, the creepiness in the hotel. There's a guy in like a teddy bear costume with a butt flap open, going down on another guy. And they, you get this look at them and they're mimicking this kind of, there's a similarity between the view that you had of, of Danny and Dad earlier. And I think that this is suggesting that the mom has discovered that Danny has been um, uh, sexually violated by his father in some manner, and that perhaps his coping mechanism is Tony. Now, Dad had mentioned that Oh, you know, I hit the kid once. You know, just he knocked over some papers and I hit him. Uh, maybe he's covering that up. You know, maybe this is uh, his 
representation of what happened. But you know, I mean, it's, it is some bit of a stretch to say this is there, but you know, otherwise, what significance does this scene have in the movie? You know, these things in movies, Hollywood films don't just happen by accident in controlled environments. So there is definitely something being suggested there. I also say, and this is the point I was about to get into, that the, the root of all symbolism in this is about writer's block. That Jack Nicholson, uh, Stephen King is basically saying, okay, how do you deal with writer's block? What if a writer is destroyed by writer's block? He goes insane via writer's block, and then you have the haunted hotel playing as like the medium through which this writer's block is manifested. So yes, on some surface level you got a haunted house. You look beneath that and you see a story about a guy, a writer, who has gone mad from writer's block. Now, seeing that I'm talented, I don't have writer's block. I shell out like a new five minutes of stand-up comedy material every month. Whether or not I get to it is a whole nother story. Uh, do I love this movie? No. Is it one of the better horror films of the 80s? Yes, uh, but I think it has some issues. You know, uh, isn't it a little convenient to have the shining people in a haunted hotel also? Like, you'll get that sometimes with Stephen King, and it works in this weird plot convenience. Oh, well, it's, they're dealing with aliens, but it just so happens they have telepathy. Things like that will happen. So, you know, it, it's kind of like you take your two best ideas you have at the time and you merge them together and you make it into one. But like I said, it makes things a little convenient. Seems a little weird the cook would even be there. Uh, some good his visions were as soon as he shows up and gets axed. So really his whole purpose was to, to bring Duke the trainer's snowcat to Shelley Duvall. But overall, you know, The Shining's pretty good. I th I'm sure you've seen it already, but hey, if you want my star rating, it's three out of four stars.